take a look at what you said in 2007. Judges have taken some of those decisions off the policy table, taking them away from the people by constitutionalizing these issues. Question, isn't that exactly what Judge Walker did in this case? No, as a matter of fact, since 1888, the United States Supreme Court has 14 times decided and articulated that the right to marriage is a fundamental right. We're not talking about a new right here. We're talking about whether a fundamental right, something that the Supreme Court has characterized as the most fundamental relationship we have in this country, can be deprived of certain individuals because of the color of their skin or because of their sexual orientation. But, but uh, Mr. Olson, you have also said this. Judges should, quote, interpret the law, not make it up, not create new rights that weren't there in the Constitution. Where is the right to, you've talked about the right to marriage, where is the right to same-sex marriage in the Constitution? Where is the right to interracial marriage in the Constitution, Chris? The Supreme Court has said that marriage, the right to marry a person of your choice, is a part of liberty, privacy, association, and spirituality guaranteed to each individual under the Constitution. When you say same-sex marriage, you're saying um, a particular type of marriage. The Supreme Court has looked at marriage and has said that the right to marry is a fundamental right for all citizens. So you call it interracial marriage and then you could prohibit it? No, the Supreme Court has said no. The same thing here, the judge after hearing three weeks of testimony and a full day of closing arguments and listening to experts from all over the world concluded that the denial of the right to marry to these individuals in California hurt them and did not advance the cause of opposite sex marriage. This is what judges are expected to do. It is not judicial activism. It is judicial uh, responsibility in its classic sense. So, so society doesn't get to say that marriage should be between a man and a woman, even though society has said that for thousands of years. Seven million people in California don't get to say that marriage is between a man and a woman, even though just in uh, November of 2008, seven million Californians voted that they wanted to change their own state constitution to say just that. In the 1960s, uh, an equivalent number is a smaller number, but of Californians voted to change their constitution to say that you could discriminate on the basis of race in the sale of your home. The United States Supreme Court struck that down. If seven million Californians were to decide that we should have separate but equal schools, or that we would send some of our citizens to separate drinking fountains, or have them um, be in the back of the bus, that would be unconstitutional. If, if we didn't have a separation of powers, if we didn't have a Bill of Rights, then seven million Californians could take away your rights or my rights or the rights of these citizens in California. But we do have a Bill of Rights and it's intended to protect us. The 14th Amendment was the result that guarantees, the 14th Amendment that guarantees due process and equal protection to all citizens, to all persons, was the result of a civil war intended to enforce the promise of our Constitution that all men and women are created equal. The judge is simply fulfilling that promise, that American promise, Wilson, she will you, have you, an opportunity. You certainly are against judicial activism. What, how do you define what is judicial activism and what is it? Well, most people uh, use the term judicial activism to explain decisions that they don't like. Exactly. What the court has done here... I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, no, I just said exactly. Uh, th th that's that's yes. how most people do define it. Yes, and, and what the court decided here, the Supreme Court, as I said, the, of the United States, um, uh, has 14 times decided that the fundamental right to marry is an important constitutional right. The judge applied that right, that existing right, that fully uh, determined and repeatedly determined constitutional right to some tens of thousands of citizens in California who are being harmed by discrimination. That is not judicial activism, that is judicial responsibility. Now, instead of letting this be decided on a state-by-state -state basis, you are, in effect, pushing the courts to preempt the argument, which is exactly what they did in Roe versus Wade. Well, would you like your right to free speech? Would you like Fox's right to free press put up to a vote? and say, well, if five states have approved it, 
let's wait till the other 45 states do. These are fundamental constitutional rights. The Bill of Rights guarantees Fox News and you, Chris Wallace, the right to speak is in the Constitution, and the Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the denial of our citizens of the equal rights to equal access to justice under the law is a violation of our fundamental rights. Yes, it's encouraging that many states are moving towards equality on the basis of sexual er uh, orientation, and I am very, very pleased about that because it is extraordinarily damaging to our citizens, our family members, our brothers, our sisters, our co-workers, and our neighbors when they are labeled second-class citizens, when the state of California, as it did in this case, enshrined in its constitution a separate status for certain of its citizens, it did immeasurable harm. We can't wait for the voters to decide that that immeasurable harm that is unconstitutional must finally be eliminated. I applaud the fact that things are changing, and I think this case is helping open people's eyes to the damage done by discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Uh, uh, All we have to do is look into the eyes of these individuals and decide why are we de denying them the right to have that we accord to all of our other citizens. Mr. Olson, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. We'll keep following your lawsuit. And i got to say, after your appearance today, I don't understand who you ever lost a case in the Supreme Court, sir. <laughs> You're very kind, Chris. Thank you for having me on your program.